Hey everybody, we're back at the Verdigree table with a level 2 adventure. The Dryad's Fury packs a lot into a relatively small package because I wanted to create an adventure that could support multiple play styles and that Dungeon Masters could really make their own. Check out the cover. Some days I think it looks like a steamy bromance novel, others a real dramatic, like, tearjerker, and sometimes I see a psychological thriller, and I'm really happy with that. And this whole thing, because the the tone here will be determined by the DM's decisions and the player's choices during play. The whole thing is available in the preview on the DM's Guild. If you want to follow along or check it out later, link in the description if you're on YouTube. If you're watching this somewhere else, consider hopping on over to subscribe to this channel. Purchasing this obviously is deeply appreciated by me and helps me make more of this stuff for you. All right, let's take a look. Page one, we get the setup. A woodcutter has sought you out because a couple bugs bears jumped them in the forest and somehow released these plant monsters that are making it impossible for him and his buddies to go do their job. Pretty standard, you could certainly spice it up, but you know, sometimes a clear, hey, here's the adventure is all you really need. Now what this woodcutter isn't telling the party is that he was leading his crew in cutting down a sacred heartwood tree because he doesn't want anyone to know that he has access to such a valuable commodity. The other thing he doesn't mention, because he actually doesn't know it, is that a dryad lived in that magical tree they chopped down. And it was her rage and pain that summoned up these blights. The bugbears were only there trying to avert this tragedy. Next, we get a page with all the NPCs in this story. And I wish more adventures did this. It might look like a lot, but there's only eight in total, including our quest giver and the dryad in question. I've worked really hard to lay the groundwork for a social and exploration-based game here. And these NPCs are broken into factions with different agendas and different knowledge. I also spent a lot of effort making each of these people into characters. Everyone's got their own goals, their own quirks, their own voice. For instance, for the bugbears, you've got Shaka, a motherly figure who might invite you in for a snack in her tidy home, but hit you with some druidic magic if you fail to wipe your feet. Her son, Bark, makes sound effects when he swings his morning star and keeps Sturges as pets. And you don't like that, you absolutely throw it out and make them your own. You can just use the bones, but I wanted to provide you with skin and like muscles and sinew as well. Then we get into the adventure proper. We've got four distinct locations, each with a map provided by the excellent and prolific Michael Lebossier, I hope I'm saying that right, to foster exploration and freedom. The players can visit these locations in any order. And there are some suggestions provided about how the story might change depending on the sequence. We also have another six encounters focused on a star, our dryad, and her blights that can occur as the party travels between these locations. And there are another three maps provided to use with these if you want. There is a suggested example sequence of events, but I could see distributing these locations into a hex map or a point crawl or leaving it up to the players or the roll of the dice. This modular design helps the dungeon master adapt to the players and keep things moving. It also makes it easy to mix and match this with other adventures. Combine this with the forest encounters and you've got weeks of game content. It also provides a lot of replay value as another group making different decisions may have a very different experience because everything in here can be an enemy or a friend. In a certain light, these woodcutters are the bad guys and they've got stats for a challenging combat, you know, if things go that way. But the DM might also end up handing that stat block over to a player to run if the woodcutters are convinced to lend their axes to the cause. The same goes for those bugbears and the various fey creatures in here who've got some tricks up their sleeves. There is a spectrum of outcomes here. The PCs can choose sides or they might simply, you know, murder everything. But there is another scenario where they play a very social game, befriend everybody in this forest and end up leading a small army into a climactic battle against the Blights. And if that's not enough, it's got me pretty excited. There is also that wild card that is the Dryad's Fey Charm. One of our PCs might get enchanted with our beautiful, mysterious, and complicated villainous anti-hero, and that will certainly lead to some interesting roleplay and strategic choices. 
Heck, there are actually three Dryad sisters and then a fourth waiting in the wings if you need her. So we could end up with most of the party charmed and infatuated by these Fae. I am so excited for you to run this one. Come back and tell me stories in the comments about how it all goes. Get out there, have fun, be kind to yourself, be kind to each other, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.